Hello everyone, I hope that you are all doing well. This is me, Sayyar Shudhyatullah. Welcome to T1 Academy. Let us see today's current affair. The first important topic that we are having today is this man, a very famous, okay, so Mr. Lalu Prasad Yadav. He was the supremo, you can say, a former leader of former president and also former CM also, Lalu Prasad Yadav. Belongs to, okay, Bihar and he is having a very successful party also that is called as Rastu Janata Dal. Rastu RJD, Rastu Janata Dal. And his son, Tejasvi Yadav, he is doing lots of heroics in Bihar. Okay, he just lost the Bihar elections with few number of seats. But his father already made that party very big in Bihar. Just like TRS and we are also having here Shiv Sena, we are also having here uh, what I say is uh, Jagan. Okay, TDP like that. So his uh, father. So what happened when he worked as a CM? 1992 to 1997, he worked as a CM and he was uh, uh, what allocated allegations were there on him with respect to what fodder scam, famously called as fodder scam. Why do we call it as fodder scam? We call it as fodder scam, why? Because so the allegations on him was he drew, means he took out 139. 0.35 crore rupees from the animal husbandry department. Animal husbandry department which is generally providing fodder vaccination to the animals. So from that department he has taken out 139.35 crores and it was brought to the notice of the Supreme Court and Supreme Court has actually anyhow uh, election commission did not allow him to contest the elections also because the case was also running he was convicted in that. Okay, so it was there in the front page of our Hindu newspaper. CBI special court sentenced, sentenced Rashtriya Janata Dal chief Lalu Prasad Yadav at a five-year jail term. Five-year jail term. And impose a fine of 60 lakhs in the fifth case of animal husbandry department. Okay, in the fifth case of animal husbandry department, this is, this particular scam is famous as for the scam because the department which is related to this this particular scam is famously called as fodder scam because the money which was taken out was belonging to animal husbandry department that is why okay fine then marital rape a very important issue nowadays a very very important issue okay general in general sense what is the meaning of rape rape is an unlawful sex without consent by a man without consent by a man but i have specific specifically taken the name of the man Okay, it's not written in the law that man or woman is written in the form of what spouse. Whether man does unlawful sex with woman or woman does unlawful sex with man. Okay, it also comes under rape. But here, majorly, whatever the incidents are there on the basis of that, we have categorized in this way. We have categorized in this way. Rape is unlawful sex without assent. Okay, by a man. Okay, man does this without the assent of woman, obviously. Rape by an outsider. Outsider means the one who is not the husband. The one who is not the husband. Rape by an outsider, okay, means rape is nothing but obviously the act that performs, that is performed under rape is sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse, this is the act which is performed, okay, uh, without the consent of women, or you can say forcefully also. Okay, that is called as rape. Okay, so if this is done, if this sexual intercourse is done by an outsider, but not by a uh, uh, what's woman's husband, okay, it is an offense. It is an offense. Obviously, he is called as a rapist only. It is an offense if it is done by an outsider under Section 375 and Section 376 of IPC Indian Penal Code. Okay, the people will be charged on their crimes on the basis of this code only. On the basis of this code only, Indian Penal Code. But you can see that outsider is mentioned. If anyone have sex with woman without her consent or by force and he is outsider then he will be punished. It means what one who gets married, one who is one who is a husband but he if he does the sex with the wife forcefully without her consent obviously without her like okay without her like then it this section excludes the husbands this section excludes the husband that particular word is called as what marital rape married Tell means marriage and the same thing is happening sexual intercourse without the consent of wife 
okay forcefully with the wife so that is also because the rape is forcefully and okay without her consent also and here also in marriage the same thing is happening that's why this is a you can say that rape is a genus marital rape is a species you can say like that okay in marital rape also marriage is the only thing happened but uh, if anyone does the sex with the wife forcefully or without her consent then the term marital rape is generally given to it okay and the husbands are excluded from these sections okay that i have already told you now section 375 if you just see that in detail consider for the sex in the marriage as crime as crime only when the wife is less than 15 years of age so right there is one provision is there which says that under article under section 375 one provision is there which says that if the if a, a boy gets married to the a woman and, and the woman is less than 15 years age and if he has sex with her forcefully then it is considered as crime it means any girl who gets married okay after 15 years and the husband does sex without uh, her consent or husband does sex with uh, force then he is again excluded so basically it is exclusion basically it is complete exclusion so that is mockery that is what mockery is happening thus this is not a crime only if the person has sex with the wife okay okay when the moment she attains what 15 years and does not mount to any marital rape any marital rape and these kind of marital rape forceful sex with the wife after marriage okay these kind of incidents are very commonly seen in today's society and many of the women are approaching the courts but the court is telling to the central why sir you are not preparing the act why you are not amending the IPC sections this way okay we want a proper okay understanding of what you think about this marital rape then central government uh, solicitor general Tushar Mehta, he said to the court, Sir, give us some time. Because this particular marital rape related, if we make it criminal, if we make it as a crime, so there will be far reaching impacts on the society and social and family fabric. So it is very important that we have to consult the states. We have to consult the states. So give us some time. It is uh, the uh, solicitor general has said to this uh, court. But this is not the first time the High Court has given the time. It is continuously, endlessly. It is what you can see, endless. Okay, the central has been, the central government has been putting this particular issue. Okay, uh, postponing, postponing, postponing. Then Delhi High Court has uh, today only said that I will not, I am not going to wait because I have given you enough time. You are prolonging this particular issue endlessly. So I am not going to give the time for by Monday you submit your opinion on it. You submit your opinion on it. Delhi High Court denies denies you can see properly okay denies Delhi High Court denies center more time in marital rape case people are coming the women are coming complete come uh, every other time and they are complaining about this and there is no law to govern it how can we discharge the justice without any law the Supreme the High Court has been saying okay this is what about the marital rape it is there also in the front page the first country to criminalize the marital rape is soviet union in the year 1992 developed societies you know that they all have good things first of all they make every individual equal women are men not interested both are equal for them both are human for them okay no atrocity by woman by man that's all about it that's why developed society educated societies will go for this kind of uh, last very early right now presidential free review what is it every five years means uh, president you know the head of the country head of the country is president and he's also called as what chief commander of armed forces chief commander of armed forces the president of india right so he he has a term of five years you know that five years he will stay in the office and we are having the honorable president ramnath kovind sir he is our president president Every president during his five years term, during his five year term, at least once he has to do this particular fleet. This review of how the, because he is the commander of the all forces, no, then the commander should see that whether our navy, whether our army, our air force is working properly or not. He should be satisfied with the total preparedness and readiness of our armed forces or not. Yes. That's why our president, who is also the chief commander of armed forces, will take a review of the various armed forces at least once in its uh, okay in its total tenure it is held once during the president term in office 
presidential yacht means a separate presidential yacht will be there like this for him only INS Sumitra carrying supreme commander of the armed forces Ramnath sir okay honorable president he expressed satisfaction sir was very happy that yes our army our navy is very good I am very happy he is satis satisfied that's all about it fine now what is quadrilateral security dialogue you know that there are four quad means four we are having here India okay then we are having Japan then we are having Australia then we are having USA so we are having almost this is like Australia Aussie map this is India this is Japan and this is USA so four countries together okay so it is also called as quadrilateral security dialogue quadrilateral security dialogue also called as Asian NATO NATO is North Atlantic Treaty Organization it is a military bloc led by led by USA formed in the year 1949 total 30 members are there in NATO but in our security dialogue we are having only four these four countries are there you can see this is United States this is what United States and this is Japan this is India this is Australia so it makes a quadrilateral or not yes that's why the name quadrilateral is there they will work on all platforms they will work on all issues like trade issues and economic issues and any kind of humanitarian assistance etc disaster management okay they will work on on issues and majorly they will focus on security maybe focus security security nothing but peace and tranquility across the region across the region how to maintain peace in the world what kind of uh, okay steps we should take together there should not be any hegemony of any country or superpower like that okay that is what they do that is what they do okay quadrilateral security dialogue it is also there then manarega mahatma gandhi national rural employment guaranteed act it was passed in the year 2005 it is basically the act is for what to remove unemployment nothing but to give employment employment very very important act okay so it is a social security scheme means society those who are poor in the society they will be secured of livelihood how by getting employment in this scheme by getting employment in this scheme that's why it is called as what social security scheme it attempts to provide employment and livelihood to the rural laborers in the country only in rural areas this particular scheme will be implemented not in urban areas special features of this scheme are the first one we are having here okay it is uh, act passed in the year 2005 implementation from 2006 100 days of work will be given to you and one member one member who is adult in every household one household five members are there if there are two adults are there only one adult will get what 100 days of work from the government side 15 days payment 15 days payment this is why payment every 15 days you will be getting what money you go to Gram Panchayat of your locality or you, you go to uh, that uh, Mandal officer of that particular locality and you, if you belong to BPL population, if you are in the rural area, you go to them, sir, I want to work. Okay, you are BPL? Yes. How many adults are there? Sir, we are, I, my, myself, my brother is there, very school going. Okay. You want job? Yes. Okay, right, fill the form and give it to, give it to me and go. Yes, sir, I fill the form. 15 days happen, but he is not calling for me job. 15, then if 15 days happen, passed, if I am not given the job, then I will be given unemployment allowances. 50% of what to be paid? If I work, 50% will be given to my account. If the work is not given to me, if work is given to me, full payment will be done. Work is not given, 50% of the payment will be done. But everything should be done in about 15 days. Okay. It is a demand driven. Demand driven means what? As a family household, I should go and demand, sir, give me work. Then only the work will be given. Government will not put your, will not come to your household, will not come to your door and say that please, please come to the job. The government will not say like that. Okay. It is a demand driven. The people should demand it. The people should demand it. That is how this scheme will run. Okay. Panchayats will implement. Panchayat will implement. And another important one, unskilled work will be given. Okay. They will not give you electrician work. They will not give you plumbing work. They will not give you driving work. Unskilled work. Head loaders. 
majorly in the construction of bridges, construction of flyovers, like that, unskilled work, not technical work, not professional works will not be given, unskilled. And manual work will be given, nobody will be given a machine to operate. Manual work will be taken with hands. You have to do with hands. You have to do with hands, anything with the hands. But not with the machine is not given to you. Manual work will be done. This is all about the Manarega scheme. Thanks a lot for hearing to me. Have a nice day.